When talking John Deacon, I think everybody agrees on the fact that he's one of the grandmasters of bass guitar. His phenomenal sense of melody contributed to crafting some of the most iconic songs of the 20th century and is rightly regarded as one of the most important players in the genre. But at the same time, when it comes to Queen bass lines, everybody brings up another one by Sadust, Under Pressure, The Invisible Man or the bass solo in Liar, which in my opinion do not showcase in full Deacon's capabilities. So today we're going to take a look at five Queen bass lines nobody talks about. First track we're going to analyze is Jealousy out of the Jazz album. First thing to notice is how the bass plays around the vocal melody on the first verse, almost doubling it at times. Love was my very first mistake. Jealousy was penned by Freddie Mercury, so it was probably written on piano. John is a pianist and he often treats the bass guitar just like a piano, using it to create beautiful melodies using the higher part of the neck. During the first verse, he plays long notes. Oh, how wrong can you be? Before getting busy, right before the one, giving great sense of anticipation. Was my very first mistake. There's a little feel before pretty much each one, filling up the spaces and creating a fantastic interaction with Freddie's voice. In the break after the first verse, John switches to doubling the guitar. On the second verse, there's a fine example of like even the highest keys of the instruments can be used in a clever way. How strong can you be with matters of the There's no feel that is repeated twice, bringing great variety to the harmonic content of the song. See, when will you let go? A perfect example of how John treated a bass guitar like a lead instrument, interacting with the other musicians in the band. Mimicking first the vocal melody and then the guitar, managing to stay out of the way and always locking in with the drums. This is Deacon's most recognizable trait, I've made a whole video about it, I put the link at the end of this video. Next is My Melancholy Blues from the album News of the World, another great example of how John interacts with Freddie's piano and vocals. The line is fairly simple to play, but the choice of notes is what makes it great. Perfectly. John spells some unusual chords, like a D diminished seventh over a B flat seventh piano chord. So old. Once again, there's no two fields that sound alike, and the scales are played differently each time, adding variety and giving a slight feeling of improvisation to the song. Until the chorus, when John once again doubles the vocal line. With my blue. On the instrumental break, there's another really cool feel a simple scale spelling an F sharp diminished seventh chord. The bass uses the whole fretboard and acts like a second voice in the band. Also, simple power chords can sound cool when played as triplets in this context. I'm just getting used to my new exposure. John and Freddie had a special connection and the interaction between their instruments is nothing but magic. Next up is Cool Cat from the Hot Space album. It's a pretty obscure song from a very controversial record which sparked mixed opinions among critics and music fans. I personally love it, and especially in the bass department, there's a lot going on. Cool Cat relies on a very simple groove, but boy, is it solid. John locks in with Taylor's bass drum, and during the whole song, John and Roger played pretty much every note together. The result is a badass track with a funky flavor, laying down the foundation for Freddie's acrobatic vocals. Very unusual for a straightforward rock band like they were at the time. There is also some space for some really cool licks in proper Deacon style. You better slow down, slow down. 
towards the end you can even hear some slap bass, probably the only time in the entire Queen discography. Next we're taking a glance at I'm Going Slightly Mad from Innuendo. This track has a very special bass line, probably played on a fretless bass. The bass is very low in the mix and it's hard to hear so I've turned it up a little bit. The song opens up with a very cool bass lick that gives us a diminished scale, taking us right away into its creepy atmosphere. <laughs> What's really cool is the way John deals with the verse. The song is really simple, but John plays each part in a different way, breaking away from the monotony of the drum beat and the keyboard part. What's crazy though is what happens during the solo. Yep, that's a Queen record. Deacon is playing completely random, but you know what? The song is about madness, so it kinda makes sense. Besides the solo section, the song is full of intentional mistakes and completely random parts. Also in the verse... One wave short of a ship. I'm not my and in the chorus... The whole bass line is probably a joke and was played this way to make the song sound chaotic. They probably thought it went a bit too far and my guess is that is the reason why the bass is so low in the mix. Either way, great job. Next up is Rain Must Fall from The Miracle. As in many tracks of the era, John Deacon drives the song with a syncopated bass line. Melodically, there's nothing too unusual about it. It's a repetitive five note loop throughout the majority of the track. What's peculiar about this bass line is the very short and punctuated notes that make it sound almost like a synth and really give a bouncy feeling to the composition. <laughs> to pull that off, it takes some serious chops. Also, there's something very happy and addicting about this bass line. Once you start, you can't stop playing it. I could go on all day, I can think of one bad or even questionable Deacon bass line in the entire Queen catalog, not a single misplaced note. Many refer to John Deacon as Queen's secret weapon and I couldn't agree more. Despite his low profile, John Deacon's bass lines were the proverbial extra mile. A vital component of Queen's iconic sound showcased impeccable groove and melodic finesse. His bass work enriched their songs, defining their legendary rock anthems forever. That's it for today, thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more.